Welcome to the Not So Perfect Couple Podcast with your host Sam and Patrick Cullinane. Our focus is on anything that helps make your relationship stronger, happier, and more sexy. We love sharing the not so perfect aspects of our relationship and interviewing other happy couples as well as sex, love, and connection experts. If you're not completely blown away by something in these podcasts, then you can have your money back. How about that? So sit back and enjoy the wealth of info our guests and our own imperfections have to offer. Because nobody is perfect. Ever. Hey. Hi. Who are you saying hey to everybody else or me? I was saying hi to everybody else, but you too. Because I said hi to you already today. Yeah, more than once. One of the things we want to talk about today is... The title of our podcast, which is Not So Perfect Couple, which we hope is totally self-explanatory, um, but we'd like to go just a fuzz, and we talk about it in that intro, nobody's perfect ever and all that stuff. Um, and the reason I think we had, we settled on that is that, uh, you know, when, when people do what we did, where we wrote a book, we, you know, we've spoken at some seminar, oops, some asshole forgot to turn off his phone. Weird. We've spoken at some Pretty seminars. Pretty sure I reminded you. And, uh, and done that kind of thing. Um, people tend to think, oh, they've got it all figured out. They're a perfect couple. It's easier for them. Um, but it's not. I don't think it's easier for us. We, we have all these tips, tools, tricks, everything that we've, we've studied, learned about, implemented that help our relationship quite a bit. And so I don't feel like we spiral as much as a lot of people we know, but it doesn't mean that we're not being mindful. We don't slip. And even the very best tools that I have, I'll bet you only get implemented 60% of the time. The other 40% I'm forgetting and then remembering. What do you think? Good talk. Um, <laughs> just kidding. God damn it. <laughs> Perfect example. That was one where I thought it was funny and she got insulted. Well, give me a second. I'm thinking, <laughs> I mean, you know, when we were talking to Brandy and Lance not too long ago and, you know, they, they named all of their stuff legendary couples. And we also think of ourselves as a very happy couple, but that can be intimidating, especially if you're having relationship issues to think, Oh, they have a real, a legendary relationship. They're a legendary couple. They're never going to be able to relate to us because we are not. Yeah. It's easy for them. Cause I mean, I would new. even say that to Brandy and Lance, like legendary couple. That's, that's a lot. And we're great, but legendary, that's intimidating. Well, so no, and then this is a great example because people are going to look at Brandy and Lance and say, well, it's easy for you because you have this perfect relationship. And they um, would tell you absolutely that's not true. You know, what's legendary, and, 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 and they'll probably back me up on this, um, is that amount of work that they did. They did a legendary amount of work in their did. relationship. Not just did. And are still doing. Yeah. Right? It's not like so, you do a bunch of work on your relationship and then suddenly everything's perfect. Right. It doesn't work like that. You have to make choices every day. You have to create new habits. I mean, that's the hardest part, in my opinion, is just not falling back into your routines, your reactions, your triggers, your, um, you know, reactions. Did I say reactions twice? Probably. I don't know. Probably. I'll do that sometimes. Anyway. I mean, there's certain things that Sam does where I've, I've allowed them to trigger me and I've acted a certain way, you know, for tens of years of our marriage, you know, and then realizing, wow, that just makes it whatever she did that triggered me and my reaction, my reaction makes it twice as bad and takes away from, you know what I mean? So things like that, where I still haven't perfected them, I've gotten way, way, way better. And I work on those all the time. And I'm sure you have your own. Everybody does. But. Yeah. And for me, a lot of it is who I'm choosing to be in every moment, you know, in thought. Yep. Anyway, so the, the not so perfect is, is, should be a title for everybody because I honestly don't think there's any such thing as a perfect couple. In fact, I'm positive there's not. There's not, not. There's not even, there's not even anybody close. There's no such thing as a perfect human being. Exactly. So if you can't have a perfect human being, you sure as shit can't have a perfect couple. Yeah, because you have two imperfects makes more imperfect. Or is it like two negatives become a positive because um, they cancel each other out? Yeah, but that doesn't equal perfect. What if two people are behaving just totally like shit? Doesn't that make it a good thing? Nope. So, I don't think it works like math, honey. Oh, okay. All right. Well, there you go. 
No such thing as a perfect couple. Glad we got to the bottom of that. You said something a minute ago that um, I want to expand on, which is when you talked about who you're being. Yeah. So, I mean, the best example I can think of off the top of my head since I started a new job since our last podcast, and that is, you know, now that I'm working and I, you know, I've had many jobs in my life, but there were a number of times when I've had big jobs and I have been, I've done a great job for the company, but who I was being wasn't who I want to be. Sure. Like bitchy and hard nosed and um, I'm always right and my way or the highway. And I, I found myself sort of slipping into being that same person when I have been working and then that sort of carries on into my personal life too. Cause then I get to being bitchy and um, maybe negative. Cause I, I'm a really good at focusing on risks and risk assessment and coming up with plans, but that can create some negativity, right? Like you're always looking for the holes in things instead of looking at all the positives. So then I see myself being, so I'm doing all the right things for my job, the risk mm-hmm. assessment and, figuring out where the holes are, but I'm being negative and not the loving, happy person that I want to be. That's the work that you've done. That's the work that I've done. But again, like going back to the not so perfect, you know, I've had days this week where I am being not my loving, positive, happy self. I'm being a negative, bitchy, not happy person. I can... It's like an old, like you were talking about habits. That's an old habit for me in business. So now I have to sort of reinvent myself in business. But I think this also applies to relationships, you know, where if you're in the bad habit of finding, you know, the negative things about your spouse or um, nitpicking them or nagging them. Those are risk assessment. Risk (laughs) assessment. Totally. (laughs) Well, I mean, kind of. And women are notorious for, um, and this comes from the book, A Billion Wicked Thoughts and, and some other um, scientific studies that women, we tend to look at the whole world as what's um, going to benefit us. And a lot of that has to do with choosing a partner that will stay around when we have babies, who will be loving to us and nurturing to us and our children. And so, it's not so that, much and that about... risk assessment never stops. And when we, you know, women talk a lot. And we're a lot of us during these conversations, we're assessing like, oh, what did he say? How did he say it? Because we're all trying to figure out like, is he going to be a good guy or is he going to be an asshole? Well, that you said, look at the world for its benefits, but it's not, I would, I think you misspoke there because I think what you're talking about is security. There's this underlying theme of a need for, it's a deep seated need and significant amount of people. Yeah. Um, but women in gen probably more so in women at least a lot almost all the women i know um have that need so well it's it's um so the risk genetic. assessment yeah the risk assessment would be is this person going to provide the security that i need right so you're always looking at them and deciding on a constant basis whether they're the right guy or not yep gal they whoever i mean it's the, in a relationship there's usually one person that has a pretty deep seated need for security yeah. All right. That, uh, let's see, what else did you say there? I wanted to comment on, that was a long one. Um, <laughs> oh, I was going to, I was going to talk about how, um, you know, there's your actions and then there's the, the person that you're being during that. So a good example for me, which is completely different, um, is we're here in Tennessee and I'm the person that I'm, Let's see. How do you how'd you word this? There's what you're doing. Oh yeah, what I'm doing. Who you're being. Yeah, what I'm doing here in Tennessee is, quote unquote, helping. Those are rare quotes. My mom um, recently lost my dad, and my mom's got this big house and a lot of yard work and all this crap to do. That we're helping her, you know, sell it, get get it, you know, upkept, and so she can get away from it. And um, but who I'm being is a person sitting out in motorhome doing a podcast because no, have, that's what you're doing. So I'm doing, sorry. So I'm you're being still the doing, <laughs> you're still doing confused, the podcast now. We, this who are you being? So right when you're, of a sentence. well, I actually think who you're being is better than what you're doing. Well, 
I'm being patient, but I'm not in, in trying to give. I'm being somebody that's this. I'm trying to be somebody who's selfless, but not selfless. Self, self. You're trying to be loving towards your mother. Yeah, but I got a lot of shit to do. So there's a bunch of days like today. We got this podcast that was due yesterday. We've got, um, you know, a lot of work that we have to do. Piles got, of work. And so <laughs> there's many days where I think my mom's outside our RV where we do our podcast now. Um, weeding. Weeding. And I'm in here doing a podcast and I go in and do other work. So so we can't help her with the weeding today. The person I want to be isn't exactly what I'm doing. So it's... The person that you're being is someone who wants to help your mom, but what you're doing isn't that may who not you're be, being. May not be construed as helpful at all. <laughs> yes, I can agree with that. Anyway, so there's more not perfection for you. Um, and there's one more thing that I think helps um, when we're talking about this kind of what you're doing versus who you're being and and that kind of thing. And you have a question that you like to ask yourself, and what is it? Oh. It's what would love do? That's a pretty deep, awesome question. So can you give me an example of how that works for you? Yeah, like when I'm getting annoyed with whatever, and it could even be, it, sometimes it's with you, sometimes it's with family, sometimes it's with strangers, even sometimes it's in my own head, right? Like when I'm being self-critical or whatever. So it could be with anybody, but... And when I feel myself being tugged and I'm not feeling, you know, good and happy and I'm thinking about why I'm being so negative or annoyed or angry or hurt, sometimes it's because who I'm being isn't and or doing isn't who I really am because what I think, actually what I think everybody really is, is love. So then I just have to remind myself, well, what would love do? And then I make better choices about how I'm thinking, what I'm doing, maybe the words I'm saying. And the the beauty of that question is that it encompasses everything. So, you know, I've seen bumper stickers, what would Jesus do? I've seen yeah, what would it's the Buddha same do? Kind of thing. I mean, it doesn't really matter because it's all love. So yeah, I really like that one. Do you ever do that? It's, uh, yeah, I did it uh, um, once. <laughs> No, I don't do it, but you just started saying this recently. And it's so true. I um it is something that I want because it I want to start implementing more in my own dial internal dialogue because especially when it comes to judgment. I, I catch myself all the time making judgments, which I know is pretty much like the opposite of love because typically the judgments, especially when they're negative, which is the majority of judgments, um mm. Yeah. Maybe they are. Maybe they're well, when not. somebody says you're being judgy, it's not usually because they're judging them positively. Yes. <laughs> That's correct. So anyway, I think um it's almost asking yourself that question is almost the exact opposite of, of making a judgment. Because if you ask yourself what would love do, love doesn't judge. So Yeah. That I like. And that's a great place for me to be done talking because I don't know what else I have to offer today. And here's another not so perfect thought. Um, just look at our outfits. What do you mean? Well, we didn't shower today and we just ran out and cranked out this podcast. So, um, I mean, I look good. You look good. But maybe that is where we kind of are more perfect than everybody else is that we can just throw a hat on and do a podcast. Look so good. Yeah, look like this. Yeah. <laughs> Hot. All right. Hot or not. Good talk, everybody. <sighs> Bye. Hey, you're still here. That means you made it through an entire episode. Maybe you should subscribe. Please subscribe and please leave a review. We love us some reviews. We love reviews. These are five star reviews. Yeah, five star reviews. Check out our website, biggerlove.com. You can find us on Facebook at Bigger Love Book, at Bigger Love Movement, at Bigger Love Couples Adventures. You can find us on Instagram. Not so underscore perfect couple. And tell all your friends. And leave a, do we tell them to leave a review yet? Yeah, we told them to, to leave a review. But what we didn't say is maybe they should be gentle with their review since nobody's, nobody's perfect. perfect. God damn it, we ran out of music. Gotta go. Bye till next time. Bye till next time. Bye.